the reason I'm showing you that is so when you're teaching kids, it's real easy for a kid to remember their hand, right? Five, five needles. Another thing is pound for pound, these needles have five times the vitamin C of lemons. Okay. So Straight for, off the tree? Yep. Yeah. So a couple ways you can utilize these. Bare bones, rock solid survival like we're doing out here today building shelters and stuff, and we have no tools, is you just get you a wad like that and chew it. Like cud? And you'll get the, the nutrients out of that. And when you're done, they'll be bland flavorless. You just spit out the salt. And that's giving you vitamin C. Another way you can do it is you can steep these needles in water and make a tea. That too will give you vitamin C and warm your core. But if we're in caveman mode, there's no fire, there's no cup, there's no tea. This is the way to do it. Why is vitamin C important? Does anybody know what makes it important? Scurvy and stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, scurvy, cell replication, you cut yourself, that's what makes it heal. But why nutritionally it's important is it's a water-soluble vitamin. And what that means is that our body doesn't store it in our fat cells. It doesn't like create it. it either, does it? Right. You have to have a supplement. It doesn't create it and it does not store it. So you need, basically, to optim for optimal health, you need a daily source. It's water soluble. Mm -hmm. It's in the water. So every time you urinate over time and perspirate, it escapes. So to maintain your health, you need this for immune system. And as you can see, it's not unpleasant. Mm -hmm. no. I get a big, big wad of them. Um, there's a lot of uses for this tree. So that's one. Vitamins A and C in the needles, chewed or as a tea. Move down to this and listen to how dry this stuff is. Real crackly. And it's a pine, so we know it's flammable. And you see how it's already down to a really small, <clears throat> sometimes almost hair-like. This is the very best stuff. It's a, even in a rain. It's, it's up off the ground. The air will dry it. You come and gather this. This is the first stuff you want to light your fire with. Your initial. Just one step above your tender bundle, you're using this stuff. So that's a utilitarian use for it. Um, it's easy to identify, too, in addition to the five needles. Notice the limbs. They grow out in what's called a whorl, W-H-O-R-L. And then there's a, a smooth part, and then boom, another whorl. And it's smooth, and again, and you see that all the way up the tree, right? <coughs> so at a distance, you can spot a white pine by that characteristic. Mm -hmm. The white pine is the only pine tree that you can do a friction fire with. Oh. No other pine will do it. So that's another thing to How know do you about do it. Fire? That's a whole day long class. We'll do that next. Um, what I'm going to do now, <coughs> the other part that makes it so useful nutritionally. And I might, yeah, I'll stand over here. Is the inner bark. The inner bark contains the following. Protein, fats, oils, phosphorus, several B vitamins starches and some sugar. So that coupled with the A and the C, it's a nutritional powerhouse. Doesn't require cooking. Notice I'm not girdling the tree all the way around. I'm scoring out a section. This won't kill the tree this way. <clears throat> if you'll hold off on your end and let me do this part first, Wayne. That way we don't shake each other's work. So I'm going to just peel this rough outer bark off ever so delicately. Are you just peeling that off? Yeah, I'm removing that part. So you're peeling just like an apple? Pretty much. Just getting that rough outer bark off. Okay. And just underneath of the rough outer bark, I find kind of a, a greenish color. I'm gonna go past that. And I'm gonna get down to what is 
white. Hence the name white sign. It's going to look something like that. With their mask. And so now that I've scored that area and I've gotten that, that light green outer section off, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start to go a little deeper and peel one side of that until I get a tab that I can pull. And I'm trying to isolate just that inner bark layer without getting into the wood. And you'll know when you hit the wood because it looks woodish. <laughs> Very wood-like. Has a woody flavor. Woody texture. That's what we're after. So break that off and pass it around. I want everybody to get a piece and I want you to chew on it. And we break it. Can I be the first one to chew? Because that'd be terrible the last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get your own piece. <laughs> oh, geez, thanks, man. And you see how underneath when I go down and now I see wood, you see the difference? That looks like wood. Yummy. So it's this specific layer. That's it, boss. Thanks for that. I can imagine that if you all that very nutritious. That's the million behind the scenes. You're the food dispenser. I apparently am. Anybody else hungry? I want everybody to taste it even if you don't want to. <laughs> Did you get some? Mm. Anybody need some? I've had it. Not I've today. Had no, I've had it. Pass that around. I didn't know this is what we're having for dinner, right? This is it. <laughs> I had it. I <laughs> Dave didn't get any. I've had it before. Now, some of these more light, airy, paper-like, that's going to taste even better than some of the thicker. Make sure everybody gets taste. So, again, this is chew and withdraw the nutrients or just eat the whole thing? Wallow. Eat the whole thing, huh? And people all, I'm, I'm about to swallow these needles. I, I say on the needles you can discard them because by, by the time you chew sufficiently, right. you pretty much rendered it. With this, um, I've seen it boiled, taken off in strips and boiled. People say like pasta, nothing like pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen it dried and ground into a powder and used as a flour substitute. Um, you can eat it raw, obviously, which we're, we're dealing with bare bone survival. I need right. nutrients to feed my furnace. We talked about having sugars right. and fats and oils. This has all that. It has protein. So that's really huge nutritionally. This is a tree and we're getting fat. We're getting oil, we're getting protein, we're getting sugar, we're getting carbohydrates, we're getting vitamins A and C, and it's not gonna run from us. We don't have to club it in the head. <laughs> It's a sure bet we can find these trees and just get these nutrients. How much did that alone sustain you? And this will heal over. It can. Between these two, nutritionally, that's that's a big deal. How much do you have to eat? What do you want? How much cheeseburger do you eat? <laughs> a whole tree. You know? And you'll be surprised how, how fulfilling a small meal like that can be when you're truly hungry and you get more in tune with your body and you're not just eating because it's available. There's been times when I eat just like a single slug or a snail, and you can feel it hit you. It's like, okay, I've eaten something. And you look at the animals, they don't, they don't go out and gorge. They just constantly ingest little bits as they go along. But in the wintertime, this is easy to spot in the mountains. It, like I say, nutritionally, it's a powerhouse. It's got a lot of stuff in it that can get you through. Now, that, that bark that I passed around is also medicinal. Um, it's an expectorant. If, you're, if you need to break up a lot of mucus and cough, the, cough it out, you take a strip about like what I did here and steep it in water for 20 minutes and that's ingest that and that's a good expectorant. Mm -hmm. So you got food, you got tea, you got medicine, you got the utility of it for fire. And even topically, you can some people apply that to wounds and for uh, addressing. So it's useful. And even a kid can spot that. It's slick and then boom, slick and then boom, and then five <laughs> needles. So you can't miss it. It's, there's no poisonous lookalikes. And in the winter, this is about what there is plant-wise. There's a few other things, but you can look around and see these are prevalent. 
not that I roll green, but does that kill the tree? Because you didn't girdle. Absolutely not. And that's why I showed you this specific way. Got it. If you come back to this, like when we train here later, come back and look at this tree. What will happen is it will heal over. And it'll just, I've got a tree I've harvested off of 30 times. Okay. Not much bigger than this. And I've done it on the limbs. I've done it on the main part. If you were to hit the reverse side a little lower, would that be bad for it? As long as it doesn't complete the ring. This is a circulatory system, basically, of the tree. As long as there's a path where it can come through and do all its conversion stuff, it'll be fine. I try to avoid that. If, now that I've done this here, you know, I would probably go to another tree or do something different. Uh, if you're really trying to not leave any trace, pick a bigger tree and go for the limb wood. Reach up and pull it down and section off a piece of the limb, pull it and eat it, and when you raise it back up, nobody sees that. It's facing the sky and people are walking under it. But yeah, that's a sure bet for nutrition.